Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, as you've seen, that Senator Ainaya Abaribe joins us next. He is the former minority leader in the Senate and he's uh, the Abia South senatorial candidate for the All Progressive Grand Alliance. He joins us virtually. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the program today, Senator. Yeah, good morning, Chamberlain. I'm glad to be here. Well, Senator, we, our, our phones have been inundated since yesterday. We uh, watched all kinds of narrative and stories about you. I'm sure you must have heard some of them. What could have triggered this, by the way? I, I, will, I really don't know. This is uh, social media age, so somebody will cook up something and put it out, and then um, without verification, so many people will run with it. So my phones have been off, <laughs> ringing off the hook. Wow. Since yesterday, you know, and I was actually in the field in Aba, in the side of Aba that had been totally neglected in uh, Aba South, in an area called Iheoji, where there was an altercation between the police and the citizens. So we went to the police yesterday, made peace for them, went to tell the people that they should cooperate with the police, and then we went to commiserate with the wife of the policeman who was killed there. And so forth. So we were very, very surprised when stories now started coming out that somebody had posted that I was in London and that, uh, well, <laughs> I became one of those in Nigeria that will hear that they have died. So, and uh, well, I, I've, I've spoken to some media and um, I had a good laugh about it. You know, I think that, uh, well, Nigerians can see me now and I'm already dressed, I'm going out, I'm going to Kwa East and West today for campaign. So we're moving on. Well, it's good to know. Uh, people just need to check my items before they either spread it or publish it or circulate it because it will be no excuse for anyone to spread any of such if you don't confirm because it, it makes them look funny uh, when they disseminate such narrative that is completely false and entirely untrue in all ramifications. But, at least good to see that you're here and hurty as everybody else is. Thank so, you. Actually, Chamberlain, yeah. actually, um, I'm one of those who are firmly for press freedom, for freedom to hold your views, freedom to disseminate your views. Uh, but matters of this nature now give a lot of fuel to those who want to suppress us and make sure that we don't have any information, make sure that uh, 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 press is guarded and so forth. So, well, I will always fight for fresh freedom. I won't bother about what has um, happened. It's uh, in the course of the game, you know, once, once you're in politics, all these type of things tend to happen. Yes, indeed. I guess it comes with the territory, as you said. So uh, concerning your campaign, uh, because initially, first of all, let's start off with, because I'm not sure we've had that account. Many initially thought you were going to vie for governorship seat, and then you were in the party PDP, then you left, then you are where you are now. So start from telling us, why did you leave the PDP in the first place? Now, now this, this is what happened. <clears throat> if you remember, the time was very short <clears throat> between the primaries and um, the uh, decisions that we were to take. If you remember, it was sometime in May of uh, 2022, and the parties had given, I think it was two days gap. And so we were running for the governorship of Abia State. The party decided that um, uh, they were going to use three-man delegate, which was a very uh, wrong interpretation of the law that we made. Fine and good. And at that moment, handed over to the uh, different governors the um, compilation of the uh, whoever was a three-man delegate who would make a choice and so forth. And in fact, that matter is still subjudice in Abia till today. I think he's uh, receiving a adjudication at the Supreme Court now, whether the party was right or wrong. So at that moment, we had to take a decision. Where do we go? What do we do? And I had had a whole lot of people telling me, if you leave the national state where you are, who will represent the interest of the downtrodden masses of Nigeria and those of us from the Southeast 
who have been complaining of marginalization and everything. So we had to take a decision. And the decision was, fine, we stay in the Senate, but not under the People's Democratic Party. Who will now choose the next largest party in Abia State? And that, naturally, is Abga. And of course, when we took that decision, everybody said, ah, this is your natural habitat. This is where you supposed to belong to. This is part in the, but this is all that. This is all that. So, well, here we are today. I'm in my Abga uniform. You can see it here. This is uh, uh, Okopa. That is uh, the symbol is uh, the cock. And we are heading out in the field. And I tell you, the reception has been <clears> wonderful. <throat> Uh, and nobody will reward failure. And so <laughs> the uh, incumbent uh, governor, who now wants to come to the Senate, everybody is telling him, don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. Don't waste your resources. Because the seat for Abia South Senatorial District is for Abga. Is it, is it really going to be a straightforward fight? Because in politics, you never can tell. I mean, as you always say, 24 hours is a very long time, more so in Nigerian politics. Now, he's a serving governor. Of course, he's got access to resources. And you know, you never can tell. Here we are trying to battle the menace of vote buying, voter inducement. So nobody knows what to expect. So can, we, can you just rule him out or dismiss him with a wave of hand? Because it looks as if he's in this to win it as well, as you say to yourself too. Well, the point is that there are six local governments. There is um, all the people in the Abia South Senatorial District. And uh, for anybody who is doing an election, there must be a path to winning. And in the path to winning, there are two key local governments. And those local governments are Banoff and Abia South. The third key local government is Obiungwa local government, where I and the governor come from. And when we put all that into consideration and also put the other outlying local governments, there is no path to winning for him. It's, it's uh, very clear, very, very clear. He knows too. And so that's why we're hearing talks of vote buying and all that. But I can tell you one thing. Even at those times when uh, the uh, the the, uh, the 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 polls we are not based on beavers. The polls we are written by hand and all that. We still always lost a battle, Afghan, because nobody could do that there. Not to talk of today, where every vote we count, where beavers will be used to upload results immediately after the polls. So we're very comfortable. And come the 26th of February, barely a month from yeah. now, it will be all over. In fact, g give us um, a scenario here. I mean, what is the feeling uh, about the uh, use of beavers for the general elections? Are they enthusiastic about it? Are they they know how it's going to function? Do they think that it's going to play a major role in determining who becomes the governor? So what, how is the optimism, or otherwise is, how is it in uh, Abia State at the moment? Yes, unlike before, right now the optimism is so high. Everybody seems to know what to do. And there is a big surge for uh, the collection of... Um, PVCs and also everybody seems to say, this time we are going to determine those that will represent us at all levels. And I am seeing a sea change in Nigeria from what I'm seeing on the field, from where we are going. And you see, even the old people on the street, you sit with them and you think that they don't understand. They all know. So that means that the 
uh, voter education has been very, very high. Every party is doing it, and we are doing it. And of course, whenever I go anywhere, I tell them, show me your finger, and they will show me, and I say, fine, this is what you're going to use to remove these rascals from <laughs> what fella calls these vagabonds in power. <laughs> so but, it's going very well. You know, you. It, it, it's, uh, it's good to know across the country that lots of people are actually going out there to register because they think that with Beavers and the IRF, it kind of increases the optimism that their votes will count, which is what they have always looked for. In fact, it is the main reason why several people have not voted for a long time. So hopefully this time it will be different. But for... It will be. Yeah, I, I, we're looking forward to that as well. But then one thing that kind of dampens the psychological makeup of some voters, uh, probably hopefully will end, is security. Uh, when these attacks happen in ANEC offices in different areas, there's always a big question mark. What do we expect? Can security agencies handle it? Will it uh, affect the elections? Will it stop people from coming out? What is the thinking in Abia at the moment? Well, um, uh, uh, thankfully, we haven't been having those type of attacks. And that is why immediately uh, there was this altercation between the police and the citizens in other south we moved in immediately i went there and i told them and they saw me and the police also we engaged them we engaged the commissioner we engaged the area commander we engaged everybody around and i said no 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 no. we don't want violence in this area and so uh, i can only um, encourage the police i can only tell our people violence will not solve any of our problems violence will not help anyone and so we think that there will be calm and there will be peace, and then we will have these elections peacefully in Abia State. Right, uh, Senator, I mean, for a lot of people who might not know, your political journey started decades ago. For some people who know, you were deputy governor at some point, and then now you've been in the Senate. And even in the past one year, your transition has been quite eventful as well, uh, from minority leader to governorship aspirant. And then, of course, that didn't work out. Then you moved uh, to ABGA, then had to step down as minority leader. Now you're running for Senate. And I mean, for a lot of people, that has been a very interesting political career. But this one for you looks like you're fighting for your political survival because this is the option you have to get back into the Senate and I wonder for I mean the people who will be voting people who are looking at uh, politicians what more would you say you have to offer uh, to the people seeing you know your journey in the past few decades so let, 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 let us also put it this way if I wasn't in the Senate if I wasn't the person who stood up and made sure that Nigerians knew those who did not want democracy, those who voted against transmission of results electronically. What would you have said? So at every point, we always contribute something. And it is only those of us who have remained consistent, who have remained on the side of the truth, who have remained on the side of the people that the people trust. And whenever we want to ask, say, oh, no, please, stay where you are and do the best that you can for us. And so I do not need to recount my credentials, but I can only say one thing. This whole business about beavers and results coming out immediately and all that, if you go back in history, it was on the floor of the Senate that I refused for a voice vote. And I said, let us all register our votes individually so Nigerians will know who will vote for democracy or not. And I'm glad that taking that stand has led us to where we are today. So we're, we're not finished. We're not finished with Nigeria. There's a whole lot of things to do. There's a whole lot of problems that we have in the country. And it will take committed and consistent politicians like me to stay there and steer the ship of state.
Right. I mean, you're still in the Senate, and one of the big issues in the Senate now is the, you know, the new notes and the January 31st deadline. As you said, you've been quite vocal uh, about issues. Some of your colleagues, in fact, I heard that one of them said he had not even touched the new Naira note. Uh, another colleague said 90% of people in her local government have not even cited or touched the, the new Naira note. So what would be your position about this one? Six days to the deadline. A lot of people are saying it looks like Maybe politicians are against this because it might not favor their plans for the election. I wonder what, your, what voice you'll be adding to this one. My position is very simple. Let there be no change in the uh, policy. All that they want, anybody who is a politician that tells you, oh, let us do this, they are not talking for the people. What they want is to look for cash to buy votes. Let it stay as it is. Let the will of the people uh, prevail. Because I'll tell you this, you shift the deadline. When it gets to that same point, they will say, oh, it's not possible. It, it, it. Let us stay on a consistent policy. Look at what happened to BVN. We shifted it for more than 10 times. Every time we want to shift, every time, because Nigerians, especially those that don't want things to work, will always find a way to say, oh, then our people are our people. They're not talking for our people. I am fully in support of the CBN policy. Let the deadline stay so that nobody will have cash to throw around. Let the people make their decision on the 25th and uh, in March for who will be in charge of their destinies, both at the federal level and at the state level. Well, Senator Baribe, following uh, the expression of this position, I wonder how many friends you would have amongst your colleagues. That said aside, um, you have said recently, uh, I read that um, some see you as a senator for uh, in, indeed the entire Indibu, and you know the reason for this may not be far-fetched because of your support uh, on uh, certain Southeast events in the, in, in the recent past, which is why I want you to speak to the events in the Southeast, the unrest, the insecurity, the attack on INEC installations. What are your fears or concerns about, uh, especially, you know, what's been said about the impact on voter suppression in this coming election? I think that these things that are happening are externally induced and sometimes supported by people internally just to make sure that people don't exercise their franchise freely and fairly. I have condemned the violence. I have condemned all these people. I have condemned all these people who are... And even at, at one... I, I came out and I said... I have visited the Namdekano and he said there is no such thing like uh, sit at home on Mondays and all that. So all that is going on is that some merchants of um, violence and destruction have taken over and uh, commit crimes. And when they do that, they now say, oh, it is uh, the, uh, this uh, group or it is that group. We totally condemn all these things. And I say again, our people are not violent in nature. All the bestiality and everything that you see is not an Igbo thing. It is something that is imported into Igbo land to harm every one of us. And those of us who speak out about it, sometimes we are also tagged, oh, once you speak out, you are supporting this group or you're supporting this group. It's not true. Nobody in the Southeast is happy with what is happening. No businessman is happy. Nobody who, uh, who claims that he, he, he loves his people is happy. You cannot destroy an economy in the guise of seeking for one thing or the other. And the people that they claim they are fighting for, we have met them uh, face to face. And they have 
disowned all this. So we want to know. IPOP says we have disowned it. We are for elections. We don't, uh, we're not part of uh, sit at home and all that. And people still say, oh, what they are saying is not correct. It is them that are doing it and all that. So how else do you resolve an issue? All we can say is this. Let the security agencies do far more intelligence gathering. Let them work with the uh, state uh, apparatus in all parts of Southeast. Also, we have also remonstrated with our governors. For some time, you have not heard that all the governors have met. They are the chief security officers of their states. Yeah. When they come together and take a stand, everyone will follow. But each of them seems to want to do their own thing separately. And it's not working because this is a regional issue. For example, what's going on in Imo? You, you pursue them in Imo, they extend themselves to Anambra. You push them in Anambra, they run to Ebony. You push them in Ebony, they run to Enugu. So you now find that every one of us must come together and work to bring peace to Ibolan. But this will not affect the elections. I tell you, you will see that the elections in the Southeast will be free, will be fair, and with beavers, the results will show who the people trust or not. I mean, I was even going to ask why the governors have not been able to address that seat at home and ensure that people go out there. But well, so I think that, that is the governor's forum that you will have to ask that question. I'm not <laughs> one of them. <laughs> but this, yeah. but you can well, yeah, have like your speed line. With, yes. Engaging with them individually. And we have also asked them, show leadership. That is your duty and responsibility as governors. Show leadership. Yes, indeed. Uh, this is good to hear that, um, I mean, you are optimistic that the turnout uh, in the Southeast region will be at least much more than perhaps people who are pessimistic may think with the introduction and expectations of the beavers. So we'll be looking forward to that. But, Senator, just before you go, I mean, there, there's also uh, this election is unique. It's going to be dynamic given the uh, electoral processes, the innovations that ANEC is bringing in, the candidates themselves across different party lines, they've all been campaigning in different areas. Would you mind telling us how you think this eventually will pan out? Because even your party has a presidential candidate too. <laughs> I have a presidential candidate in ABGA. Other people have their presidential candidates in various parties. And then, of course, I have my preferences and everybody has their preferences. On the day of the election, the results will show. And I'm going to join my very good friend, Ngige, to say that when I cast my vote, you will know where my vote will go. Thank you very much. <laughs> so wait, John Ellis will focus on your ballot paper and see who you have voted for. Is that what you think you are yourself are telling us? Their PVCs. That's all. Let our people get their PVCs and show that they, they are determined to make their votes count. All right, uh, Senator Eninaya Baribe, uh, he's vying for the senatorial seat for Abia South Senatorial District. Thank you very much indeed for your time. And good My to pleasure. see you. That they can actually do see that, yes, you are here. Thank you.